All right, everyone, welcome and thank you for joining us for the August 2016 edition of ServeNow EDU. Uh, once again, I'm Trent Carlisle, co founder of Logical, the parent company of ServeNow and Serve Manager. Today's topic is an extension uh, of last month's webinar where we talked about uh, using social media for the purposes of skip tracing. Today, we are with JJ Goldborn who will be talking about computer investigations and the use of social media. I will uh, definitely give JJ a proper introduction shortly, but I first wanted to remind everyone that these webinars are recorded. You can watch this one and pass ServeNow, EDUs on ServeNow.com, YouTube, or subscribe on iTunes. Uh, so don't worry about uh, furiously taking notes. This will all be available uh, on our website. I also wanted to take a moment to let you know that next month's ServeNow EDU will feature Jason Marsh, who is an SEO consultant, and he is the chair of the American Bar Association's Client Development and Marketing Committee. And he's going to talk about developing a successful online advertising campaign. So please take a moment and register for that by going to ServeNow.com. That, uh, that registration link is available on our website, servenow.com, then click on ServeNow EDU. And as I mentioned before, today our guest is JJ Goldborn. Uh, I actually got the chance to uh, meet JJ a couple months back at our offices here in Denver where he spoke about, or I'm sorry, where he spoke at the uh, PSACO Process Servers Association of Colorado Annual Conference. And the, uh, the audience and I were very impressed with JJ's presentation and that's, uh, a lot of what he's going to share with you today. A little background on, on JJ is uh, he's currently the IT manager for the uh, Barry Lawrence Regional Library and is an active lieutenant with the Lawrence County, Missouri Sheriff's Office where he's been for the last 10 years. Prior to that, he was with the Christian County Prosecutor's Office as an investigator and system admin. Uh, he previously worked for Greene County's Prosecutor's Office uh, as a system admin and was, uh, was an investigator there as well. Uh, JJ was also a reserve deputy with Greene County Sheriff's Office where he was assigned to the training division as a firearms instructor. He has a total of 23 years law enforcement experience and he is a military veteran with 16 years of military experience. So JJ, first of all, thank you for being here today and uh, Anything I left off in that, uh, that intro, that impressive uh, introduction? No, I think you pretty much hit it on the head. You got the most important points across. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. I hope you will find this uh, educational as well as entertaining. Um, I'm not one of those instructors that likes to bore the living daylights out of anyone. Um, I like to have fun in the... Uh, you know, in the process as well. Uh, one thing um, that I want to let you know is I've got a limited amount of time between this presentation and my next gig. Uh, I'm an instructor with the Missouri Sheriff's Association Training Academy, and I am uh, hosting a class for the academy starting at 6 p.m., and we're running till 10 p.m. tonight. So. I'm not going to rush through this presentation. There's a lot of information that I'm going to throw at you. But as Trent says, uh, this is going to be on the website. So, I mean, don't scramble too much to uh, jot down notes. However, at the end of the presentation, I will give you my email address and my contact number in case you want to reach out to me to uh, either host some training for you or come out and do some training. I love to travel, by the way. So I love Dr. Pepper, so you can bribe me with lots of that. Um, and that's about it. Cool. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hop off here. And I just wanted to let everyone know that if you've been to uh, ServeNow EDU in the past, a lot of times we've done interview style. We've done questions throughout. Um, however, I'm going to uh, just turn it over to JJ. He has some slides he's going to share. Um, and uh, we're going we're gonna to have a question and answer session, but we're going to save that for the end. So probably in about 45 minutes, or so we'll start fielding some questions. We're not going to try to go 
longer than an hour. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop talking, but I'm also going to drop a link into the GoToWebinar uh, chat feature that you can all access. That is where we're going to be, where we have posted some materials, some some handouts that JG has provided. So I'm hopping off. I will see everyone in about 45 minutes to field some questions. Uh, take it away, JJ. Thank you. All right, brother. Okay, folks. Um, one of my additional duties right now, and you know, I thought that a year and a half ago when I quit full-time law enforcement and transition to my secondary career with IT was that I wouldn't have a lot to do with law enforcement, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. Um, I'm on the executive board for the Missouri State Investigators Association, which is basically a fraternal organization for uh, law enforcement investigators and private investigators, both uh, those you know, law enforcement officers that are shielded and non-shielded. Uh, basically, part of my job is to manage the website uh, for the association and also I'm on the uh, conference organizing committee and part of the training committee. So I conduct training pretty much every year for these guys. Now, I know that some of you in the audience today are process servers and, and um, I want you to understand one thing. I'm not going to be doing this presentation based solely on the techniques that are used by law enforcement officers only because uh, in my 23 career I have actually served process um, both in and out of uniform. There's a lot of attorneys here in Missouri that call me up and say, hey, we need you to go serve papers. And I'm like, well, it's the weekend. I'm off duty. All right, I'll do it for some extra money to go to the gun show next week. So um, I can relate to you. In fact, here in Missouri, we have a really good working relationship with our process servers or civilian process servers because if we did not have them, we as law enforcement officers or deputy sheriffs, we'd have to go take that stack of process and go out and start hunting these people. Um, one thing I mentioned to Trent uh, earlier on when we were chit-chatting, in the Missouri state statute governing concealed carry, process servers in Missouri are authorized to carry concealed without a permit because the state legislators realize the inherent dangers that are posed to process servers in Missouri. And so our guys are packing, you know, whether they have a, a concealed carry permit or not, and that is allowed by law. So um, <clears throat> this presentation is a scaled down version of the original one that I do for law enforcement officers. That, that original presentation it, w with questions and answers at the end of the presentation plus demonstrating some techniques it runs about four hours and a lot of the law enforcement specific content I've removed it but there's a lot of tools and resources that are available to those of you that are private investigators and also process servers and skip tracers and that's what we are going to talk about today so um, you know, social media is it, it's a valuable tool when you're conducting investigation, when you're seeking evidence or information about people, you know, on cases including missing persons, wanted persons, recruitment for gang participation, crimes, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of information about criminal activity is posted on social media. And these people, literally, they're stupid. I mean, I, I know it's a harsh word, but I call them stupid because without stupid people, us as law enforcement officers, we wouldn't have jobs. Um, this uh, uh, law-abiding citizen that you see here, that piece of crap is Michael Brown. Um, he was the one that started all that crap up in Ferguson. And, of course, his mama says that, oh, he's a good boy and he's an angel. But this was off his Facebook page with him holding a Glock, money in his mouth, and then the doofus behind him is back there smoking a joint. And he was the one that uh, beat the police officer to a pulp. And then when he got shot, everybody decided that they wanted to riot. But, you know, the reason I posted this picture Basically, it's not an attempt to belittle anyone. He's a criminal. That's the bottom line. And, you know, this was evidence that was used to basically refute 
most of the statements made by his attorney and his mama that he was an angel. He was not an angel. And thanks to social media, we were able to uh, bring this information out. So when you think of social media, a lot of people think of Facebook or Twitter. But a lot of people don't realize that there are over 200 popular social media sites used by people every day all over the world. In fact, there are over 1,000 social media sites in existence worldwide right now. But about 200 of them are actually being used by folks here in the continental United States on a regular basis. Um, there's millions of web pages, blogs, social networks, and other platforms for information and communication that span the entire globe. The big mistake that a lot of these people make is that they think that when they post something on a blog or they post something on a web page or they post something on a social media site that if they decide that, oh crap, maybe I should take that down, the big mistake they make is that it's go they think it's gone once they hit the delete key. And too many times I've basically generated arrest warrants for people that I've conducted social media investigations on them and the information that they deleted was probably a year, two, maybe three years ago. And uh, they were very surprised in court when I presented it. So having an intimate knowledge of not only the technology but how it can be obtained legally and ethically and how it is handled and used will be required for you to successfully conduct an online investigation. So I'll tell you real quickly how I got started with this training. When I was the investigator for the Christian County Prosecutor and I left that job a year and a half ago to actually take on my current job. Um, I worked a case where a 21-year-old convicted sex offender who was out on post-sentencing or actually pre-sentencing bond released into the general public. Why? I don't know. Um, he basically shacked up with a 14-year-old girl in an adjoining county and was living with her. Um, her mom was divorced from her father, so she lived with her mom, and he lived there at the house with her and her mom. And, you know, her mom, according to her mom, they were in love, so she didn't see anything that was wrong with it. Now, unbeknown to this turd, she had a Facebook page, and her profile was public. And when I connected with her Facebook page and started digging, every nauseating detail about their relationship, postings, videos, photographs, it was basically listed right there and the fact that her Facebook profile was public, it was all open source intelligence and it was legal for me to just go grab all of that, create a probable cause statement and request the judge to revoke his bond we brought him back within 24 hours and we shipped him off to prison and that's where he's hanging out now for the next 20 years um, and then after that I started doing uh, a couple more social media investigations and I decided well you know what there's a lot of resources out there so let me create something that will actually assist law enforcement officers and private investigators through the Missouri State Investigators Association to help them with their job um, as far as uh, Facebook is concerned, it is the number one social media site with approximately 1.4 billion mobile users. And when I say mobile users, I'm talking about tablets and phones. I'm not talking about the static computers that people use on a regular basis. Okay, 1.4 billion. There are five profiles created every three seconds. People spend an average of 40 minutes per day on Facebook. It is their life. Uh, statistics show that there's 82.4 percent out of social media users every single day that log on to Facebook. Um, as far as social media login preference by users, I put this up here because when you are conducting a social media investigation, 
I don't know how many of you are active on social media or multiple social media sites, but generally you can use one login. And if you have a Facebook email address that you use as your login, you can use that one login to connect to other partner sites that are actually owned by Facebook. And so if you have that one login, when you get ready to do a social media trace or a social media investigation utilizing some of the tools that I'm going to show you today, you don't have to go and search a whole bunch of different profiles or search a whole bunch of different email addresses. That's that one email address will actually assist you in going out there and finding the information that you need. Now, I'm going to tell you the same thing that I tell law enforcement administrators when I go to their departments or I go to their, to their conferences um, and I'm conducting this training and I'm going to talk to you guys directly who own your own company and for those of you that have multiple employees if you are going to authorize them to conduct social media investigations you need to CYA you need to cover your ass pardon my French but I don't know how else to tell you you need to cover your ass here's the thing you know you you don't know the people that you work with you don't know what they're gonna use the tools and the resources that your company is authorized to use and you don't know if they're going to use it for actual for personal uh, you know for, for personal gain so you need to create a social media investigations policy that will cover you in court okay you need to you need to create one if you don't have one it will come back and bite you in the butt in the handouts that I provided to Trent there is a copy or a sample of what a social media policy actually looks like in fact when I was uh, active in law enforcement full-time as an investigator with the prosecutor's office one of my cases got challenged on the stand while I was on the stand the attorney basically asked me what gave me the authority to do so so I took my badge off and I showed it to him and I said this does and this does and I held up a copy of the social media policy that was signed by me and signed by my prosecuting attorney if you have one of those there won't be any questions as to why you are conducting an investigation or a social media investigation on a particular individual so basically take my advice um, when you're creating a policy there's five key considerations that I recommend basically you need to address the scope of the policy make sure you address that it is for official use only it is not for personal use and if there are any legal issues in your state and I don't know about the you know if there's any in Colorado or not if there's any legal issues in the state or any case law precedents in the state that addresses social media you need to actually make reference to those and if there are any other related policies in your organization you need to put that in there so those are the five key considerations that you need to actually address in your policy so a little brief history of social media Social media actually emerged like 20 years ago. Uh, in 1999, Friends Reunited was the first online social network. I don't know much about that one. In fact, I never used it. Uh, in 2006, Twitter was launched. Facebook opened to the public. Google has more than 25 billion pages. Uh, in 2009, a quarter of the world's population is on the Internet. In 2011, there's 200 million Facebook users. There's 65 million tweets daily. There's 2 billion daily views on YouTube. And then by 2013, there were 225 plus users on LinkedIn, 500 million users on Twitter, and 1 billion plus users on Facebook in 2013. I can tell you that a number has probably doubled since 2013. Um, you know, social media investigations, they're being used. Uh, in legal and criminal investigations uh, some of the information posted on sites like MySpace, Orca, Facebook has been found to be useful in locating subjects I'm gonna show you some tools that can help you with that uh, 86 percent or more of law enforcement agencies in the US are using social media when conducting investigations in fact 
uh, after conducting uh, trainings like this, I've had officers give me feedback that told me, hey, I actually worked on a case for about six hours right in front of my computer, never left it, and then, you know, basically did my probable cause statement, sent it to the prosecutor without leaving my desk, okay? Um, in cases, people who posted content on Facebook and on MySpace, it was used in court to determine appropriate sentence based on their attitude on uh, their blog or on their, their feed. And, you know, what you have to understand is that these social media sites, they're like small cities. And in some cases, you know, like Facebook, they're actually, they're actually like, like, you know, countries within themselves. In fact, the population of Facebook is greater than the physical population of the United States and uh, Europe combined. That's how big the Facebook population is. A um, couple current trends out there, you know, uh, social networks based around live streaming video like Tiny Chat, Snapchat, and mobile social networks like Foursquare, Vibe, and Vine, they could be really helpful when you are actually tracking someone down, especially some of you that are doing skip tracing. You know, you subscribe to uh, some of these uh, social media sites and you jump on and uh, the person, your target that you're tracking, if they're on there, you can get their exact location and actually just go right to them and put the habeas gravis on them. Uh, what we're going to talk about a little later on is geolocation and metadata. I'm going to explain that to you in a little bit about what geolocation and metadata is, so just sit tight. I will cover that. Um, so, you know, with so many platforms, where do you begin? Well, when you're conducting a social media investigation, you need to focus initially on the big five. Facebook, Twitter, Google+, which is getting extremely popular, YouTube, and Pinterest. Those are the five sites that you need to actually focus on when you're conducting your social media investigations. And, you know, when you're harnessing social, uh, harnessing information from the social web, um, you know, it, it, it can become very involved, very time consuming, okay? Um, a lot of it, it's going to take sweat and hard work. And, you know, like I put down here on a slide, there's no magic bullet or secret sauce to conducting these, you know, it, but there are some tools out there, and there is one in particular that initially was sold to law enforcement, but actually, you know, uh, a legitimate bona fide private investigations firm can actually purchase it it's not cheap but it works like a charm and it is well worth the money and it saves you a lot of legwork and a lot of sweat okay all right so let's jump into some of the tools that you can use as an investigator the first thing we're going to talk about and just basically clarify and get out of out of the way is basically OSINT which basically is the acronym for open source intelligence you know open source intelligence it's basically it, it's finding, selecting, acquiring information from a publicly available source or sources, and then you use that information by analyzing it to produce actionable intelligence. Open source, basically, it's based on those profiles that are public, that are not private. If you go to my Facebook page, you go on Facebook and you type in JJ Goldborn. My Facebook profile it is public and I've got nothing to hide. And after looking at it, the one thing that you're going to say to yourself is this SOB is crazy. Well, yes, I am. But I have nothing to hide. But everything on my Facebook page, because my profile is public, it is considered open source intelligence. So if you have a target or someone that you're tracking, or someone that you're looking for and you go to Facebook and you just type in their name and they all the information that pops up on them that is open source intelligence it is there it is public and you can legally grab it pull it down and use it in your case without any legal ramifications um, one of the things that a lot of these people don't realize is that when they use their smartphone 
to actually take a photograph and post it on uh, social media. The GPS coordinates are embedded in those photographs and they're not smart enough to turn off the GPS on their phone. In fact, when you try to turn off the GPS on your phone, it will yell and scream at you and tell you that a lot of the resources that are available on your phone won't work if you turn it off. So then they'll actually just go ahead and turn it back on. So embedded in that photograph basically is what we call the geolocation or the GPS coordinates of where that photograph was taken. Uh, a lot of the tablets that these people are using it has the same feature built in. A lot of the newer digital cameras that are super intelligent that you can actually upload to the web directly from the cameras, it also has the ability to actually embed the GPS coordinates in that photograph. And that information is stored as what we call metadata. That metadata is what in law enforcement we refer to as the incriminating data that is in a lot of Microsoft documents. Um, I've conducted investigations where I've analyzed documents that were written in Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Publisher, and actually been able to trace it back to the author. And they're like, how the heck did you do that? Well, that metadata is embedded in every single Microsoft product that you create. It will show name in some cases it will show the MAC address or the IP address it will show the date and time it will show the name it will show the name of the author it will show all that information in those Microsoft documents and the same thing is embedded in those uh, photographs that you take basically the social the, the GPS coordinates so if you have a photograph what you would want to do is you hover your mouse over the photograph and you right click and then you click on properties and go over to details and right down in the center of it you will see the latitude and the longitude of the GPS coordinates of where that photograph was actually taken okay um, now you're like okay JJ so I got the latitude and the longitude what the heck do I do with it after that well it's real easy you go and match the coordinates on a map and you can actually use Google Maps to do so. Okay, you actually go to Google Maps free and you actually type in the latitude and the longitude coordinates and it will give you pop up and it will give you the actual location of where that photograph was taken. And it is real easy to use. Okay, now one thing I want to bump back here and I want you to look. Uh, at the center of the slide it says EXIF data okay I'm gonna explain what EXIF is EXIF stands for exchangeable image file it is a standard format for storing files in uh, phones tablets and in um, your your digital cameras uh, a lot of these uh, newer cameras they have the EXIF annotation storing information such as the shutter speed, the exposure, the F number, what metering system was used, if you used a flash when the photo was taken, the ISO number, the date and time, white balance, all that good stuff that a lot of the investigators at the FBI, they actually love to dig into those photographs and actually get that information. So that's what EXIF data is when you actually go to the properties and you're looking at the GPS coordinates and if you see EXIF version there that's what the is the exchangeable image file okay uh, another product that you can use is um, Apple iPhoto um, Apple is getting ready to phase this out but you could just open the iPhoto app and you can just take the GPS coordinates and drop it into Apple iPhoto and then it will just start pinning the location so if you've got a perp that you're chasing and they are actively traveling you know uh, as shown in this uh, this photograph right here this example the person was just constantly on the go and every time they go to a certain area they would just take a photograph and then they would just go ahead and post it on social media and if you use um, Apple iPhoto you can actually drop the GPS coordinates in there and actually just track them just track them. Um, it's being replaced with photos OS OSX I believe is the name of the product 
that it's being replaced by, but it's a really good tool to use. Um, another good tool, make a note of uh, this uh, web address here up top, that URL. It's called Metapix. If you have a photograph and uh, you want to grab as much information from that photograph, like we just discussed, the types of uh, data or the EXIF data that is in that photograph, you grab that photograph and you go to this website and you just drop it in the center. And when you drop it there, it will spit out everything about that photograph to include the GPS coordinates, to include all the EXIF data. It's a really good tool. I've used it a couple of times. Um, it, it pretty much works. The only way it doesn't work is unless somebody took a Polaroid photograph and then they scanned it into the computer or they turned off the GPS on their device when they took that photograph. So Metapix with a Z at the end dot com slash hashtag landing and uh, that should be in the handouts that I provided to Trent as well. If it's not, when I give you my email address, just shoot me an email and I will forward this information to you. Um, another good tool that's out there that's free is Google reverse image search. Um, basically, if you have a photograph, a digital photograph, in the process of conducting your investigation, you want to know where it was taken, or you want to find similar photographs or an attempt to identify a subject from the photograph, this is where this tool comes in really handy. Here's the deal. If that photograph matches any photograph in any social media profile that is public and it has been indexed, and when I say indexed, it means that the search engine, Google search engine, and the web crawlers from Google have basically gone out and harvested all of that photo photographic data from the website. Google reverse image search will kick back a match or as close as possible from all of those profiles that it actually finds a similar photograph. And then that will assist you in identifying who your subject is. Now, the last time I made this presentation to a group of private investigators and skip tracers, I had one guy in the back of the class and he got mad as heck because he said that, hey, and I mean, he, he was just livid. He's like, you are giving erroneous information because uh, Facebook does not allow search engines to index people's profiles. Well, I proved him wrong, and he looked like the back end of a horse when I was done. Yes, when you sign up for a Facebook account under the privacy settings, if you do not check the box that states that do not allow search engines or web crawlers to actually index your information from Facebook, I can guarantee you that if you go out to Google and just type in your name from Facebook, you will see that it makes reference to your social media profile. Okay, my argument is done. Um, so, reverse image search, it's not perfect, but it's a in really incredible, powerful tool, and when it works, I'm going to tell you, it works really well. Okay, so don't let anybody tell you that search engines do not index social media profiles. They do, because if the user or the subscriber does not basically opt out of the search engine or the web crawlers indexing their profiles, it will index it. I promise you that. Okay, another good tool which is similar to uh, Google's reverse image search, it's called TinEye. T-I-N-E-Y-E dot -E com. Um, basically, you can actually browse, upload a digital photograph, or just grab a URL from a website or a social media profile, drop it right here under the image uh, address, and hit search, and it will give you a ton of information, a ton of information. It will open up a whole bunch of rabbit holes for you to go down and start digging. Um, Let's talk a little bit about Facebook because, like I said, um, Facebook is the most popular uh, of all the social media sites out there. And 
it is it, it, it's a treasure trove of information. It's got a ton of information out there. Now there is one particular tool on Facebook that I want you to be uh, aware of, and it's right here. It's called the graph search on Facebook. Um, there's a little bit of contradiction with this graph search, and I'll tell you what it is. You know, Facebook touts privacy for its users or subscribers. However, they created this graph search tool, which inevitably, basically, uh, it, it makes your privacy or your private information on Facebook null and void. Um, and I will, I, I'll demonstrate to you how, how graph search works. Basically, this graph search tool, you use it within Facebook. And, um, you know, there's one thing I neglected to tell you. For those of you that are conducting social media investigations, do not use your own personal profile. Make sure when you create a social media policy that you create a bogus account, a bogus profile. I have a bogus profile that I use um, basically for conducting social media investigations. I don't use my own profile. I use my bogus profile. That's my investigative uh, profile. It is sanctioned and signed off by my boss stating that, hey, he's going to use this profile to conduct social media investigations. So make sure you create a bogus profile. It is 100% legal. 100% legal for you to use a bogus profile to go and conduct social media investigations, okay? The only thing that you're violating is probably the Facebook uh, usage rights policy, and the worst that they can do is shut down the profile, and then you just go back and create another one and then continue using it. But, you know, that's all said and done, and I really don't care whether they do or not. I've been using mine for about four years, and they haven't caught on yet. So the Facebook graph search. Um, Here's how this works. Okay, let's say you are hunting someone down by the name of Lucinda. That's all you've got is just the first name Lucinda. You don't have their last name, but you know this person lives near Canton, Ohio. So what you would do is you would basically click in the search box on Facebook and you would type in with the, with the quotation marks people named and then you put her the first name Lucinda in a single quote people named Lucinda who live near Canton Ohio close the quotations and then you hit search it will go out and every single person that is on Facebook with the first name of Lucinda who lives in Canton Ohio it will come back and give you a hot link or a hyperlink to their profiles. Now, like I said, it's it's I I don't know if those people at Facebook legal realize what they created with the Facebook graph search, but I can tell you from a cop's point of view, it has helped me a lot. Because if Facebook had abided by the privacies that they tout for their subscribers, they would have never created this tool and they have no idea just how valuable this tool is. You can actually go beyond that. You can find people uh, using the quotations. You can uh, type in friends of people named first name dot last name or last name dot you know first name. Um, photos of people or people who have visited uh, and then you just basically type in the name of the place. You got to remember to put in the quotation marks in there. If you don't put that in there, the search engine will not go out and grab that information. Okay? Um, here's the thing about it. A, a bonus tip for you. If the person you're looking for has blocked themselves from public view, uh, basically they have um, made their profile private with the Facebook graph search, you will find them through their friends. So if you're hunting for Joe Blow, who lives in uh, Aurora, Colorado, and you type in basically friends of Joe Blow who live in Aurora, Colorado, it will go out, it will find everyone who is a friend of Joe Blow, and through their friend connection, 
you can hit that hyperlink to that to their friend's profile and actually gain access to find Joe Blow. So do me a favor, don't go out there and tell the general public about this because then Facebook will shut it down and that good resource is going to be gone. Okay? Um, another good tool is Spokio. Uh, it's pretty common. It's been around for a few years. It will search 60 of the top social media sites using a single email address. Remember a couple slides ago, I talked to you about the types of logins that people use. Okay, right now you can log into YouTube or log into Google using your Facebook email address. Spokio utilizes this feature. It will take an email address, it will go out there, and it will search. People are creatures of habit. They don't like to have multiple email addresses, so they will use one email address when they actually cruise the internet or use social media. And that one email address, Spokio will go out, it will search the web, crawl through every nook and cranny, and every social media site associated with that email address, it will come back and it will actually give you that person's profile information. Um, I'm gonna be. I'm just gonna tell you right now. It doesn't always work. It doesn't always work. But when it does, it is a freaking gold mine. You will find more information than you can actually shake a stick at. Okay. Um, moving on. Another one is Noem. Um, the way Noem searches, it doesn't use uh, the email address it actually uses the profile handle and so you know if a guy's name is Tom Jones in real life and he goes by Mr. Lyons 100 on the internet you basically use Noem to search with that pseudonym or with that profile name and it will go out and it will find everyone who uses that particular uh, handle Mr. Lyons 100 and it will actually pull back all of that information and it will give you. Now one good thing about Noam is that it will search over 500 social media networks to see if that particular name or that particular social media handle as has been used or is being currently used and it will bring back a treasure trove of information as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about Instagram. Um, Instagram basically is like the 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 top you know I mean compared to snapchat it Instagram has over 20 billion photos plus loaded on their site and it continues to grow they've got over 200 million active users now here's the thing about Instagram Instagram was not made as a platform for a home computer or a laptop computer it was made for a portable device such as your phone or your tablet um, it, the desktop version really sucks it, it's literally worthless okay however there's a really good tool that I use with Instagram and it's called Instagram for Chrome. Um, I use Chrome browser a lot. I use Firefox a lot. I don't use Internet Explorer because it sucks. I don't use Microsoft Edge that came out with Windows 10 because it sucks. Uh, so I use the Chrome browser a lot. Um, if you're not familiar with the Google Store, there's a lot of free apps with the Google Store and the Instagram plugin for Chrome is actually free on the Google Store. So what you would do is you would download Google, Google Chrome and then you would go to the Google Store and search for Instagram for Chrome and you download the Instagram for Chrome and it will automatically install. And when it installs you will see this little icon in the top right hand corner of your Chrome browser. Now what happens when you hit that uh, little uh, Instagram uh, icon is that it will actually launch a version of Instagram that is similar to that of your portable device, your tablet or your phone and you can actually use it on your desktop to go and conduct searches 
if you don't want to sit there with your little three or four inch cell phone or your tablet, little five inch tablet, and try to search for information. So the Instagram for Chrome plugin, I would recommend that. Real good, real useful tool. Um, another tool that I use and one of the last cases that I worked at the prosecutor's office is Google Alerts. And once again, folks, it is free. Um, I had a case where I was driving around serving subpoenas and I pulled this guy over. I don't, you know, working for the prosecutor, I, I did hardly wrote any tickets. I hardly pulled people over. But when they were doing something stupid, even though I was in an unmarked patrol car, I would normally pull people over and make the, you know, the occasional contact, you know, and uh, this guy just happened to be one of those sovereign citizens, you know, one of those people who hates law enforcement, who hates the federal authorities, literally, you know, you have no jurisdiction over me, what is your authority to stop me, one of those kind of people. And um, he refused to roll down the window. He refused to exit the vehicle while I was conducting this traffic stop. And literally, I just told him, listen, man, you can either roll the window down and step out of the car. Or I'm going to smash the window and drag your butt out through it. Okay. Well, while I'm standing here talking to him, he had made a phone call to some of his sovereign citizen buddies. And within like two or three minutes, I kid you not, a whole host of them showed up on the spot and they started filming this traffic stop. Now, you know, when I conduct training on social, social media, uh, on uh, sovereign citizens and the dangers posted or posed to law enforcement, you know, I tell my guys and gals, hey, you know, they're dangerous. Uh, they hate law enforcement and they don't have problems. They don't have any qualms about actually shooting you guys or actually trying to hurt you. So anyway, I basically picked up the radio and I called my buddies and a whole bunch of cops showed up. And um, I ended up arresting him, taking him to jail, and um, we had a long, drawn-out court case. But I wanted to continue gathering intelligence on this guy. So what I did, I went to Google Alerts, and uh, I logged in using my Gmail address, and then I created an alert. I typed in his name, comma, sovereign citizen, and I just basically hit create. So I created this alert. And within about two or three days, I came in one morning and my inbox had about 60 email alerts from Google Alerts. And every single one of them led me back to a link on social media where this guy was posting information about the traffic stop that I did and then uh, information on threats actually making to other law enforcement officers. So all this information, we use it in our case against them and we shut them down in that county. So let's say you're searching for someone. Uh, you want an alert on, uh, we'll go back to Joe Blow again. Uh, basically you type in his name, comma, social media activity, comma, um, social media postings, comma, photographs, comma, um, blogs, and then you set the alert. Anything with your guy's name that pops up on social media during that downtime when you're away from the computer, the web crawlers are going out there and they're searching, they're grabbing all of this information and it's going to send you an alert and it's going to send you a whole bunch of information that you can use in your case. Um, Google Cache. Here's another good tool that is out there and it's open source, it's free, and you don't even have to have a Gmail or a Google account to use it. Um, I have worked cases where I have gone back and pulled information that people have posted on social media, posted on websites, posted in blogs that they had deleted and they thought was all gone. And I've gone back and pulled information that they had posted years ago, and it was still there. And this is where Google Cache comes in. Basically, let's, uh, for example, I typed in Bob Marley in Google and I hit search. So you will see all the results that come back. Well, if you notice, you've got these little drop down arrows here. Okay? If you go to the official Bob Marley site, like the first example that's here, and you click that drop down, 
and you click on cached, everything that was posted in previous years, it will be available in the cached directory. The same thing applies to social media postings. It applies to website or blog postings uh, for people that you are hunting. The same thing applies here. Now, the only way you will not find any information in the Google cache is if the servers were rebooted. And I'll tell you from an IT guy's perspective, we don't like powering down our servers. You ask any IT manager out there, they will tell you, <clears throat> excuse me, that they do not power down servers. They don't like to power down servers. And I can assure you that Google has multiple redundancies when it comes to their server farms. So all of this information is available in Google server cache. They don't power down their servers, and unless they get a court order to go in and purge information, it will be in there. So if you're searching for information that someone posted a year ago, six months ago, or two years ago, that they went back and deleted from a social media site, or deleted from a blog, or a web page, it's more than likely you will find it in Google Cache, okay? Um, another good tool, it's called Skip Ease. Uh, it's a website um, that you can go to and you can actually type in an email address or type in a name. Um, so if I were to type in JJ Goldborn at, uh, in this web address when I go to that URL and I hit search, every social media profile of mine out there, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, it, Google+, Google Hangouts, it will come back with a result for each one of those. Uh, real good tool, works wonders, okay? Um, I do recommend it. Um, here's a tool that if you are conducting an investigation and you're on a social media site and there is a video on that particular site and you don't know how to download that video off of the social media website or that particular website because it has blocked uh, or has stuff written in, um, it will, you can use this tool to actually download the information. And um, it's, uh, it, it, it works, that's all I can tell you. You download it and it works. Basically, you just go highlight the video, and it will actually download the full video. It can download a snapshot of the screen. It will download a snapshot of every blog, everything that is posted there, but it will grab video and embed everything into a file on your desktop. Um, here tool out there, if you have, for those of you, if you're conducting for the investigators, um, be very careful. NCASE Forensic Imager, it is free to use. You install it on a thumb drive. I've used this successfully where I got a search warrant for a computer, followed the guy for several days. He, will, he just happened to stop at a McDonald's, got up, walked away from his computer, and went to go order something, and his computer is on. And I walked up, shoved the thumb drive in there, and just let it do its thing. And in two minutes, I walked away, and I had harvested his entire hard drive. Real good tool to use, okay? Another tool that I recommend is Facebook Forensics. This used to be for law enforcement only. It is free for you to use. Download a copy of it, Facebook Forensics. Install it and go play with it using your own profile and see how much stuff it brings back. And you can use that for some of your targets. I'm rolling a little fast right now because Trent is telling me to shut up because uh, we're running short on time. Definitely not telling you. I'm just giving uh, just a heads up. We've probably got about five, six, seven minutes left. Um, However, there's only a few questions, so if you want to kind of rip through some of these remaining tools, you can do that, and a reminder to our audience that this video will be posted on the website tomorrow, so don't worry about furiously writing all these down, because you can come back and reference the website in the video tomorrow. But yeah, and yeah, if, yeah, if you want to shoot me an email, I will write down or, or type up a bunch of these tools and how to use them and ship it out to Trent, and he'll post it out there as well, too. Um, here's another good tool. It'll cost you about $1,400, but it's, yeah, I mean, you buy it, you can install it on as many of computers as you want. X1 Social Discovery. Here's what it looks like when I, when I run it. 
okay? It goes out and it crawls, and if you notice over on the left-hand side, it goes and it searches all of these social media sites, harvests all of this data, it brings it back and actually catalogs it, and you can download it as a PDF file, and it is discoverable. It puts it in a format that if uh, uh, the opposing attorney wants discovery or request discovery on this stuff, it is discoverable. So, um, you know, it's a good tool for you to use. This is an actual case that I worked where I used X1 social media discovery to go out there. It grabs photographs, um, and I, I, I actually uh, deleted the names um, or redacted the names, uh, but this was an actual case that I used it on. Okay, these are some of the sites that you can actually use X1. Um, you can download a trial copy, which gives you about 15 days to play with it, and then after that it doesn't work, but it's an awesome tool. Um, one of the things that I really, really wanted to touch on, and it's probably the last thing I'm going to touch on, is searching the dark web. I teach cops how to use certain resources to go out there and search the dark web. A lot of people don't know that the dark web exists, but the World Wide Web has three layers, basically. You've got the deep web, where the government websites hang out. They're not indexed by social media search engines. And then down here in the dark web, this is where all the creepy crawlers hang out. Okay, um, I teach cops how to go down there and how to how to uh, how to harvest information. Let me warn you: if you are going to go to the dark web and search for someone that you are intent on snagging, do not use a computer that is plugged directly into your office or your home network. Because when you go there, they can see you buy a piece of crap laptop or a junky desktop computer and actually connect it to a firewalled port that has no reverse access back to your home network or your office network. Um, right after I conducted this training back in May, I had a police department that called me like two weeks later and they did not listen to me. They went out on the dark web, they searched for uh, a couple of bad guys and they used a computer on their network and the next thing you know their whole entire infrastructure was shut down including their server with 30 years of case files and evidence files on there and they were calling me hollering for help and I said brother I can't help you now you should have listened to me um, here's how you get to the dark web okay don't use your, your personal social media login always use an alias or a fake account and there's this program out there called mask my IP download that install it on the computer and then download a copy of the Tor browser T-O-R that is the browser that will connect you to the dark web and you can go and you can search but please heed my warning don't just arbitrarily load the Tor browser on your office computer or your home computer and actually start searching the dark web because you have just opened up a portal similar to actually performing some weird incantation and opening a portal to hell because every creepy crawler on the dark net will be able to see you and they will actually have access to you. So be very careful. It is not a place where you want to go and you're not prepared to go. But trust me, you will find a lot down there. How much time do I got, brother? Uh, I mean, a few more minutes if that, if that, if that works for you. There are um, a few questions that okay. are kind of rolling in. So. Okay. Um, IP address tracing. Go to IPlocation.net. I love using that. If you've got an IP address on a computer and you want to know where it's at, uh, use IPlocation.net, type it in. Email address tracing. Uh, if you go to this URL, you can type in an email address. It will give you back a response similar to this, depending on the type of um, email client that you're using. If you're using Outlook or if you're using Thunderbird email, depending on what client you're using, it will say, it will give you this information. It will show you the IP address of the computer, where it's coming from. It will show you the mail server that it was delivered to, or actually coming from. 
and was delivered to before it actually relayed itself to you. Okay, so that's actually a really good uh, program to use or a really good website to go to. What is my IP address.com slash trace dash email. Okay, um, guys, I could go on for another hour because, like I said, this is like a three hour program. Um, but, uh, you know, um, due to time constraints, I'll, I have to shut it down right now. I will tell you this if you guys want to get together as a group, and have me face to face conducting another training for you guys and Trent is willing to host it at his, at his awesome facility I will come out and I will do it and we will I mean I, we can do this for four solid hours and demonstrate at the same time on screen so that you can know how to actually properly use some of these tools and resources and actually see them in action so Trent will be my contact person on that um, if you guys want me to come out and do that, we will make it happen, okay? Um, I'm going to end the presentation now, and I'm going to hang out and lay it on me. Sweet. Awesome stuff, JJ. I'm, uh, I'm never, ever going to visit the dark web. That sounds like a, a scary place. You don't want to go there, dude. I live there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so in one way or another, we'll find uh, a way to get a little more, uh, more, a little more JJ's time. This is great stuff. Um, there's a handful of questions out there. I'm going to skip uh, over a few because I think you answered some of those as far as what tools would you recommend. Um, I'm going to suggest that everyone goes and re-watches the video tomorrow. If you didn't get a chance to write all those down, you can... Uh, watch it at your own pace, pause, write things down, etc. Um, one question is, you know, how far back can social media sites like Facebook be searched? Uh, I'm assuming it's as long as that account's been live. I don't think they, Facebook doesn't delete anything, right? No, Facebook doesn't delete anything. Uh, there was a time where, as a law enforcement officer, if I wanted information on a subject on Facebook, they would rather delete the whole profile rather than give it to me. Uh, right. Due to mounting pressure from the federal government, they don't delete anything. So as long as that profile is active, you can actually go back and search going all the way back to when it first started. So there's, there's literally no limit to the information that you can actually go back and pull. Gotcha. Uh, da, da, da. What did, did you throw? I, I, I just I know we're not going to get to all the questions. Um, what? Uh, how do you want people to get a hold of you if they have specific questions in regards to your presentation? Did, did, was that on one of the slides? Nope. Uh, that's I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pop it up here. Um, here is my contact info. If anyone is still looking at uh, the screen. Uh, it's JJ Goldborn at Outlook.com. That's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Uh, this is my office number, and this is my cell number. Um, please don't write it on any bathroom walls, okay? Um, don't sign up for the dark web with it. Don't are posted on the freaking dark web because I don't <laughs> like the girls that are down there. Uh, they're not date material, so don't do it. Um, but the easiest way to get a hold of me is uh, via Outlook.com. And um, Trent, like I said, I know. I mean, I will make another trip out. You know, if 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 you want to organize something, um, I, I'll be more than happy to make a trip out, and we can do this for more in depth, and then we can actually go into the second presentation, which talks yeah. about how to harvest the information and catalog it so that it is all 100% legal, and you know. Presentable for court. Go. Yeah, yeah, and I'll um, I'll just say because we are going to have to wrap it up. Um, both uh, you and I have time constraints here. But if your questions did not get answered, uh, either email JJ or you can email me Trent at servenow.com. One way or another, we'll get those questions answered. I apologize for the short QA today. JJ has a lot of great information. We wanted to make sure we got as much uh, picked his brain as much as we could. Um, Again, video will be uh, live tomorrow. The slides will not be posted. Um, JJ, those are uh, those are unfortunately copyrighted through one of your uh, organizations. Is that correct? Yeah, it's copyrighted through Missouri Post Commission, which um, I it's 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 licensed to me, 
for law enforcement training, but I can I can actually create a document not using the information in some of the slides and actually make it available to you to give your folks so we can so I can share it with them. I mean it's my all of, someone someone asked about the handouts. All of JJ's handouts are available on servenow.com. Um, I I dropped a link in uh, the chat. I will go ahead and do that again before we sign off. But um, JJ, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much. This has been phenomenal. Um, we had, just so the audience knows, we had almost 300 people registered for this particular uh, uh, webinar. So great turnout. These just keep growing and the value just keeps growing for certain ADU. Thanks for supporting the uh, process serving industry. JJ, hopefully we get more of your time one way or another. Uh, everyone will be getting an email in the next 24 hours with the link to uh, the handouts, the video, um, additional notes. Remember to go to uh, servenow.com uh, and register for the next EDU. That will be on developing a successful online advertising campaign. Uh, JJ, any parting thoughts? Um, just be careful when you're out there. Um, maintain your integrity. Make sure that everything that you're doing when you're harvesting social media information, conducting an investigation, make sure that it's 100% legal and make sure that you keep your integrity intact. If you have any questions at all about creating the social media policy or how to go about, you know, if you got questions on a case that you're working and you need some advice on how to approach it, uh, Trent, feel free to send out my email address with the handouts. Uh, just contact me or call me uh, on my cell. Uh, if I don't answer right away, I probably am face deep in a server trying to tear it apart or something like that, and I will call you back as soon as possible, and we'll take it from there. Great stuff. Thank you again, JJ. Uh, have a great evening. Take care. All right. Bye, everyone.